Welcome back to the Super 16 Sports Final. I've been waiting all week for our second Super 16 showdown matchup. But man, it was, certainly was a game a lot of fans were looking forward to as well. But unfortunately, this game came down to a concerning ending when one of Jersey Shore's players actually collapsed, as Jim Cole showed us earlier. Max Engel had to be taken to the hospital. The game ended in a 21-21 tie. Let's check out how that game started, but certainly not the ending we wanted to see. The Seals wanted to win the district title this season. They know Jersey Shore is standing in its way. They lost to him twice this season. First half, man, take Seacrest. Look at him go. 80 yards, a 43-yard touchdown to make a 7-0 Bulldogs. Very next play, they kick the ball off. And Tucker Teets, he was injured at the beginning of last season. He's like, I can't wait to play in this one. Takes it back 95 yards for the touchdown. That ties the game up at 7. Jersey Shore up 14-7 in the second quarter. Third and seven, Mac. Mark Pastore on the slant to Gavin Bastian. A 44-yard pitch and catch to tie the game up at 14. Under five minutes to go, Tate Seacrest with a five-yard run. 21-14, Jersey Shore at the half. But as I said, the game ended in a 21-21 tie. Max Engel taken off the field in the fourth quarter. The game call with 11 seconds to go. Hopefully we can see these two teams in the district championship all over again. We'll continue to follow the story on how Engel is doing. The race to 50, Danville's offense unstoppable this season with Madden Patrick leading the way. They scored 50 points on their first two games of the season, drop the drama, insert the blowout when they play. Now Central Columbia, it's their turn to try to slow down the Ironman. Danville trying to keep that offense going. At Central Columbia on the road, they've got so many weapons. Another weapon right here, Bo Shepcock. Aaron Johnson with a nice block to set up the touchdown, 7-0 Danville. Madden Patrick. Still going, connects with Carter Ropp, looking for the block outside, and he's still rolling. Mama's putting that on this refrigerator, a 65-yard touchdown just like that, and Danville wins this one 53, or 55 to three, excuse me. Lackawanna Trail looking to make its record perfect, three and oh. We pick it up in the third quarter, first possession for Trail, inside handoff. Isaac Ryan, the sophomore, untouched. That's how you do it. Makes it 33 to seven Lions. But the big story, the Lions defense, relentless. You draw it up, they shut it down. They drop the quarterback for a 10 yard loss there. Next possession for Nanakoke. Matt Petrine up the middle, it's stripped. And of course the Lions recover. Brian Gow for trail, picks it up at the 43 yard line. First play after that, you know, good defense leads the good offense. It's the sweet Lucas Gumble. Gumbles up 43 yards, takes it in for the touchdown. Lackawanna Trail improves the 3-0 with a 40-13 win. Pittston area visiting Wyoming Valley West. Pittston area backed into a corner. But watch what happens on this play. Drew DeLuca gets dropped in the backfield by Carter Isabel. Then from there on their own two-yard line, the miracle of miracles, DeLuca throws it up. <laughs> And that's just how he drew it up. Well, not exactly, but he'll take it. The pass to Lucas Loreseto, and it's perfectly placed. That leads to a 98-yard touchdown. Pittston area gets the win on the road, 20-13. to Crestwood made it all the way to the Final Four last season, but to start 2023, the comments, not the start they envisioned. They're 0-2. But the older players are like, this team will never give up. We're going to keep working hard just like we did last season. And there's no way we're going to start the season 0-3. Presswood looking for its first win of the season on the road at Wyoming area. Third quarter tie game. Warriors with the ball. And Aaron Crosley, 23-yard touchdown to give Wyoming area the 14-7 lead. Crestwood trying to answer on its next drive. Jaden Shedlock, the star sophomore quarterback, He's got so many skills, including this one, running in 43 yards to the end zone to tie the game up right there at 14-14. Like a tennis match, the Warriors get the ball this time to Michael Crane. Oh, watch him work. Still rolling in the open and in the clear and in the end zone. Wyoming area up by eight. Crestwood trailing by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. In the closing minutes, Wyoming area's defense held Crestwood on its last attempt to tie it up on the big fourth down, and Wyoming area wins it 29-22. That's the game right there, so we needed a couple downs uh, plays to make the stop down there, and our guy, defense came up big on third and fourth down there. Crestwood, a great game again, three weeks in a row. Uh, they're in tight games like that. I actually was in the trainer's room at halftime, and I uh, heard the Crestwood team uh, listening to the music, and they were getting hyped up. So. So it, it proved where they're at. They thought they were going to come out and score, and we shut them down. So 
it's exciting uh, just to come out here and get a team win. The whole week, we in our heads, it was impossible that we were losing this game. I mean, everyone contributed, everyone played lights out. It it was impossible for us to lose this game. We, it was everything to us, and, it, and we, we we did it. Montoursville taking on Lewisburg at Bucknell. The Lewisburg band tuning up for a big win. The first quarter started off strong for Montoursville. Look at this interception, Hayden Harvey. Montoursville able to move the ball in the first half, but they just cannot generate any points. No score after the first quarter. In the second quarter, Chase Renrick finds Lewisburg's Chuck Landis with a long catch. That's a big connection there. The Green Dragons with a monumental first down later in the drive, less than three minutes to go in the quarter. Lewisburg's Chase Renwick, the protection breaks down. He's like, I'll take it myself. Gobbles up a 15-yard touchdown. The game goes to double overtime, and Montoursville finds a way to win this one, 21-14. to How about Hughesville and Bloom? Hughesville is up 6-7. to Hand off to Luke Stetsman on the corner and takes it in to make it 14-6 to Spartans. We pick it up in the third quarter. Bloomsburg with the ball. Wyatt Brocious takes it up the middle to tie the game up at 13. The Spartans get the ball back. Oh, that nice pass zipped in there. Tyler Wetzel connects with Aiden Barlett, takes it all the way in for the touchdown, and let's see the final score in this one. Hughesville wins 26-13. to 13.